Hi everyone and welcome to the ASP.NET Monsters. This is episode number one and production code for this episode is capital VG. Uh, our topic today is exploring startup.cs. So startup.cs is located here inside of a brand new project. You can see that I've just done found new project here and we have startup cs so this is the entry point for the application and this is where we configure pretty much everything we're going to be using inside the application so this is from the mvc template correct yep right. that's right so i've just done kind of file new project aspnet 5 uh, and i chose the the default project as opposed to an empty one you see empty one is hard and complicated <laughs> so uh, the first thing to take a look at down here is the entry point for the application here so this is where if you're running this as a standalone application, you'd actually end up inside the application. So this just says that basically we want to run this startup file that we're in fact already in. Uh, so the, the first thing that we end up in is the startup constructor right here. Uh, so what this does is it goes up and sets up our configuration sources. So we'll talk a little bit more about configuration in a, another video here. But in this case, we've added the app settings.json file. So that's the, the app settings.json file that you see over here. And we've told it that we're just going to be using that and we're going to override anything that it's environment specific if there happens to be anything there. So if you had like app settings dot production or something like that, then that would be loaded in a production context. Uh, if we're running a development environment, we're going to add our user secrets. Again, we'll have another video more specific to user secrets coming up later. But just uh, and then, really shortly yeah. though, those user secrets are kind of cool because they're like per project environment settings that don't get uploaded with any of your source code. They're their local chair machine. Right, so this is a system that's designed to stop you from going, oh, I uploaded all of our production credentials to GitHub for exactly. the third time this week. Exactly. i got to stop doing that. Uh, but at the same time, it, it lets you actually keep your, your secrets on that machine so you're not always having to re-enter them every time you awesome. resync or rebuild your machine. All right, uh, so we've added this. We're going to add environmental variables, so that will override anything else that comes from the application settings.json. Uh, so this is useful for hosting environments that set environment variables, uh, and it's also going to be useful for just setting up stuff on your local build machine to try out different stuff. Oh, I should drag this window over so everyone can see you guys. All right. We are mighty good looking here. So now this this startup method is invoked by the host in cases where you're not running from the command line. Right. Yeah. So this is this is going to end up being basically called uh, during startup by IIS or by whatever web server you happen to be using. All right. So that brings us to configuring services. So if you're not aware of this, dependency injection is now like a super big thing in ASP.NET 5. Uh, so if you've been using dependency injection for a while, you'll feel comfortable and at home. And if you haven't used dependency injection at all, well, you're going to start using dependency That's injection time. starting right about now. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Uh, so we started off here with adding some services. Uh, so just just in case you, you haven't used dependency injection before, uh, the idea is that we have a kind of like a container, a box that we add all the bits of our application to and then instead of requesting uh, very concrete bits in our uh, application so instead of saying hey give me the the database user manager we just say give me a user manager we say give me an i user manager and whatever happens to being configured in this container is what will show up uh, so this this empty project here, I added authentication to it. There's a little checkbox when you create the application for that. Uh, so because of that, it's added some entity framework. So this is EF7 that's been added here. Uh, and we're also adding some identity services here. And then weirdly enough, we're actually adding all of the MVC components into the dependency injection container. So this is anything of your uh, your controllers and your filters and those sorts of things that end up being put in here. On the note about the um, Entity Framework 7 stuff, it's just important, I think, to point out that we have the Julie Lerman of Canada with us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dave Paquette is one of the uh, monsters that are uh, on the call. So um, we do have Dave with us, and uh, it, in a future episode, he will be diving deep into Entity Framework. Right yeah, on. so that uh, if you're watching this, Julie, you better look forward to the Dave's episodes because <laughs> he's going to be laying down some entity framework knowledge that you're probably unaware of. 
All right, uh, and then we're going to add a couple of uh, transient services here. So we'll get into what transient services mean in a, in a future episode. But in this case, these are, are both services that are used by the authentication framework. Well, and so, you know, we're going to have another look at that one too. Like I think the uh, the SMS and the email senders, those are actually interesting in and of themselves. And there's, yeah. there's probably th the ways that you can use that and integrate that out in cloud stuff is really cool now. And we've got some great samples for that to work through too. Yeah, the SMS stuff is particularly cool, I think. So this little method's pretty interesting here, this configure services, because it's just a few lines and it's added entity framework and made all the identity pieces available within our MVC application. It's just that little bit, that little bit of code wired everything together. Mm -hmm. So if you have your own services, which is definitely something you want to have, so maybe you have something that um, sends email outside of this email sender that's already here, you would register that here. Uh, or maybe you have a service that does some complicated math or something like that, and you would add that that in here too. Uh, so depending on how much logic you put inside your controller and how much you put in services, this might end up being somewhere that you, you really drill into a lot. Uh, so this, this default configure services here just uses the, the built-in container inside MVC. If you're doing something really powerful and you want to use your own container, then it's definitely possible to plug in your injects, your autofacts, maybe even your structure maps, if perhaps you enjoy a structure map. I know you're out there, people. <laughs> uh, so once that uh, service stuff has been configured, then we end up down in this configure method down here. So this is again called by the runtime and this builds up our HTTP pipeline. So if you are coming from a, a background in ASP.NET applications, you might have put uh, modules into your pipeline before for doing, I don't know, the authentication or session management or something like that. So all of that stuff is now going to be managed through this configure method here. Uh, so the, the kind of traditional ideas that we had around modules have sort of gone away and come back in a slightly modified form. Uh, so this is where we end up doing the configuration for that stuff here. So uh, we start off just setting up some logging information here so we can actually get some output from our application to see what's going on if something goes wrong. Uh, if we're in a development environment here, so this env is development is a helpful flag to see if you're in a development environment here. So this sets up browser link. So that's the, the handy little thing where you can you know, update your CSS files and your browser will update your CSS files automatically. Uh, there's an exception page that gets put in here. So this is a slightly less friendly uh, exception page that'll give F you a little friendly more Friendly to developers though, like it'll yeah, it's friendly to developers. stack trace and all this stuff that we normally mm -hmm. see in the yellow screen of death. Yeah. Yeah, and also like a database error page will give you some information there too. That's actually a big that one, win, right, Dave? <laughs> that yeah, what did you guys cool. discover about that? this one recently. We're going to have to do a, a session on that specifically, but it really gives you a lot of really cool information and actually provides actions that you can do to fix the problem. So, yeah. Very cool thing. Right. So if we're not inside the development environment, if we're using production environment or test or stage or something that isn't development anyway, uh, our exception handler is just going to be this home error. So this is just going to be a, a route that gets called. Uh, and then down here, uh, we're doing uh, database stuff inside here. Uh, next in the pipeline, we have this. There, there's a line I... that makes me very sad there. And I understand that it, it happens at some points, but we got an empty catch block there. So <laughs> Yeah, so we can just replace that with bad. <laughs> so everyone will remember that all. Oh, okay, there we go. I don't want to destroy the application. Uh, so this use IS platform handlers. So this is going to defer stuff that our application doesn't know what to do to IIS. So if you're not hosted on IIS, that line there can disappear. Uh, this use static files is, I think, a very interesting little tidbit to have here. So by default, this application will not serve up files like your CSS files, your .js files, anything like that, that the that it uh, doesn't run through the pipeline normally. So those will not get served unless you have this use static files line here. Uh, use identity, we talked a little bit about how our application was set up for identity. That's just saying, hey, jump into the pipeline here. If somebody's trying to get to a page they shouldn't get to, then maybe stop them. 
Uh, and then we have some routes down here. So this is pretty much what you would have seen before if you'd used MVC at any point. So this, this middleware is configured uh, like the Russian doll model, right, essentially? So if we get down to use static files and the static file handler is going to return CSS, that doesn't even have to enter the MVC pipeline. Right, yeah. So the, the, the little bits that you plug in here can either make a change to the incoming request or the outgoing response and then pass down to the next level or they can stop it right there and so say, ah, russian, no, russian doll with short circuit sure i i don't know Maybe. <laughs> what that looks like yeah okay a russian doll with putin okay <laughs> yep that's it we're going to coin that term so short circuit is now a putin <laughs> Uh, and if I should happen to disappear in some sort of mysterious polonium incident, then you will know that that joke was not appreciated. <laughs> okay, so I think that's pretty much everything in this startup.cs. Uh, this is going to be a file that you'll end up modifying probably a fair bit inside your application. Uh, At least during so... that, that startup phase, hey, getting that running. Yeah, certainly things like uh, setting up your container is going to be something that you probably end up playing around a little bit with um, and of course you can you can defer this stuff like you can use other classes you don't have to put all your logic inside this sure. file here yeah. okay um, well no, thank go oh, you have more stuff oh, sorry go ahead those use methods uh, like use identity for example down in the configure method yep so th those are I think they almost always have overloads, right? Where you can specify options. So if you need to yeah, make some changes so, to how identity works, that's that's where you would do it, for example. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even, like, there's a bunch of stuff that is supported by the framework that is not in this example here. For instance, you can you can have the system list all of the files. You can have, like, directory listing enabled in here should you have some sort of weird circumstances in which... You want people to see the files on your web server. You can see there in the use IS platform handler, there's the Lambda there, and you get the options as something that you can then, you know, make changes to if you need to or, or configure as required. Right. Yeah, I have no idea what's hanging off this yes, that, object, but there'll be there's a few off of that one. Um, I think there's just the two collections or two properties. One of them's a collection, yeah. I think. So. Yeah. Excellent. So that is startup.cs. And it is. So uh, it's one hopefully. of only about 400 files that get created when you do a file new project. So we've got at least at least 400 episodes to go. Yeah, we have plenty of content. Don't worry. Uh, Simon, has anybody won the prize yet from the contest? Uh, no. Okay. We have a secret decoding contest, mm. which we're not going to say anything more about. That's it. You guys have to figure it out. Perfect. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. We'll see everybody on the next episode. Cheers. Hey.